soul. soul. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me will never die. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Some Sadducees who say there is no resurrection came to Jesus and put this question to him, saying, Teacher, Moses wrote for us, if someone's brother dies leaving a wife but no child, his brother must take the wife and raise up descendants for his brother. Now there were seven brothers, the first married woman, the first married a woman and died leaving no descendants. So the second brother married her and died leaving no descendants. And the third likewise, and the seven left no descendants. Last of all, the woman also died. At the resurrection, when they arise, whose wife will she be? For all seven had been married to her. Jesus said to them, you, Are you not misled because you do not know the scriptures or the power of God? When they rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but they are like the angels in heaven. As for the dead being raised, have you not read in the book of Moses, in the passage about the bush, how God told him, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob? He is not the God of the dead, but of the living. You are greatly misled. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. In this time, there were many factions or divisions in the Jewish leadership. You had the Essenes, you had the Sadducees, you had the Pharisees. The two main distinctions were between the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And the Pharisees, as we heard in the reading today, did not believe in the resurrection. So to keep it straight, if you want a little mnemonic device, the Sadducees were sad, you see, because they don't believe in the resurrection. Just a little thing to keep them straight. But we hear in that first reading, that, that long first reading, for, for a daily mass, that was a long reading. Um, it's a beautiful story from Tobit, and it's from the Deuterocanonical book. So you won't find that book in the Protestant Bibles. They might put it in the Apocrypha, but it's one that Martin Luther chose to take out of the Bible, which the Catholics included. It's been a cycle of reading, so you don't know what was happening. Uh, the one guy, he's praying for death because he slept under a tree burying his fellow men, doing a good thing, and a bird defecated in his eyes and he lost his sight. So he said, God, just kill me. You know, wanted to die, but they knew that they couldn't take their life because that's just such an egregious offense against God because God has big plans for all of us. And in our world, we see the sad statistics, how many people are our su the suicides are way up because of the COVID thing, and we need to pray for all those people that, that struggle with that. They have no hope. Uh, it's a very difficult thing when people are in the throes of depression. Uh, we can never judge the immortal state of someone, um, but it's important for us to try and help people and help them know that God has plans for them, that the cross is a great mystery for sure, but if we put our faith and trust in Jesus, we'll get through it. So obviously, Tobit knew this, and, or Tobias, and he knew this, and so he continued to put his faith in God, even in the face of great suffering and ridicule uh, and all the rest. Sarah, we heard the story, was married seven times, and every time her husbands died. We have that nice lady who was saying such nice things to her in the reading, right? Just saying, yeah, why don't you just go kill yourself? You know, you've killed your husbands, why not now yourself? So. Not really a very upbeat thing to say to Sarah. So she too was tempted to commit suicide, but because of knowing that her father would be in shame, she wasn't thinking again about herself. That's the beautiful thing, isn't it? 
Because no matter who we think we are, we always are meaningful in the world and we're all, always important to someone else, even if we don't realize it, even if we don't know it. So that's why the church has this beautiful sense of life. And that's why life is so precious and that's why it's so meaningful with the martyrs, Marcellinus and Peter. Peter was an exorcist and he was imprisoned. And it was Marcellinus' daughter, I believe, who was possessed by a demon. And Peter expelled the demon from his daughter. And they were so moved that they then themselves became Christians. This was under the Diocletian persecution. Now this may seem a little strange, but I kind of have a soft spot in my heart for Diocletian. In organizational terms, he was an excellent emperor. But as the story goes, I think in Gibbons, someone had told Diocletian that the Christians would kill their children and drink their blood, which was totally a wrong thing. And so he believed that this religion was a very evil religion. He didn't know what Christianity was. And so acting on bad advice, he tried to purge the empire of this religion. And that's where supposedly the persecution came from. But it was Diocletian who was willing to share his power. He divided up the Roman Empire into various geographical sub-regions, and they were named after him. This is in like the 280s or 290s, uh, and his name was Diocletian, and these little sub-geographical sub regions were called dioceses, named after Diocletian. So the church that we experience today, the Roman Catholic Church, essentially is the Roman Empire purified of its paganism using a system of roads, language, and law to take the good news of Jesus Christ to every corner of the civilized world. You know, we, we pray that, that God will just help us be instrumental in helping the world understand that death is not the end and that we do live forever. That's what Jesus was trying to tell the people in the reading today. And I would argue, sadly, we see, you know, Our Lady of Fatima and other, some of these Marian apparitions suggest that there may be um, the great apostasy, the great falling away. I'm not sure if we're in that time period, but certainly there is a great apostasy in the church today. You have many leaders who want to put their focus on earthly and worldly things. They want to say that we find our joy and our pleasure in making sure that all our material needs are met or our emotional needs are met, even if those emotional needs are wrong-headed and, and, and against the scriptures. So we pray that we can discern clearly God's love for us. And let us pray that we too can be open enough to, to understand God's great love for us and that we realize that we are precious in God's eyes that each one of you is an infinitely valuable, one-of-a-kind masterpiece created by God for a mission. And that mission is always to try and keep people focused on the eternal realities. Marcellinus, who was a Roman, a very prominent Roman, I believe, who became Christian, it cost him his life. And he was happy to give it because he knew that death was not the end. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray for the church, that she may be a light to the nations and a guide to all peoples, we pray to the Lord. For all nations throughout the world, that they may know and serve the common good and not be motivated by greed and self-interest, we pray to the Lord. For Judy Sikos, the intention of this Mass, we pray to the Lord. For more vocations to the priesthood, religious life, faith-filled marriages, and the dedicated single life, we pray to the Lord. We continue to pray for an end of the pandemic, we pray to the Lord. Let it, we pray that all corruption be uncovered and those responsible for it lose their power or be converted so that we can have leaders that respect life, religious liberty, and all that's in accord with natural law. We pray to the Lord. For all the healthcare professionals, military personnel, police officers who work so hard to keep our society healthy, secure, and safe, that they may persevere in all the negative things that are going on in our world. We pray to the Lord. 
that we all may grow to love each other and not be duped by those who seek to divide us, those who seek to try and foment hate between the races, that God will help us see their wiles and strive to build a community of love. We pray to the Lord. Lord. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers of the people gathered here before you, those spoken and those kept in the silence of our hearts. Answer them insofar as they meet our deepest needs and are in accord with your holy and divine will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. 